Well, this uh, today's daily topic is silver, a thousand points of light, a thousand points of light. Uh, somebody alerted me to uh, this organization, a thousand points of light, and I tried to do some research on it, but it, I really couldn't. Obviously, it's a, an Illuminati organization if you really want to uh, dig out the conspiracy stuff, but yeah, more likely is. Uh, it's started by George Herbert Walker Bush um, back in the 90s or early 90s, I think, uh, with backers like uh, J.P. Morgan, Allstate, Disney. I don't know, there's uh, some other big names out there. Um, Bank of America. <laughs> So, I, I could say that's pretty much up there with the heavy-duty heavy, heavy duty people, you know. Uh, they look for volunteers. And, you know, probably it's something to do with, uh, you know, I could state this, probably um, the elitist in this world, even though we disagree with them, um, they may be thinking they're doing the right thing, you know. How's that? How's that? But I uh, just want to point out that the organization does exist, but, you know, the thousand points of light ought to be the thousand uh, points of light everybody should have, as in silver coins. You know, and it does look like there's some other factoids coming up. I just want to point this out. Like J.P. Morgan, for instance, you know, back in so many years ago, they never even had a vault, a physical vault. You know, like when J.P. Morgan took over the vault, there was all these, you know, a gold vault and everything. J.P. Morgan took, you know, bought, has um, the, a gold vault now. It's like people were saying, oh, that means there's less physical silver. They're trying to do this and trying to do that. But I could state this. Um, this is interesting because it looks like J.P. Morgan has greatly diminished its position in a derivatives market in gold, but has greatly increased its physical, the physical presence by actually having a safe. So, you know, that goes right back to 101, what people have been saying all along. And, uh, you know, rather than just keep putting out, you know, I know there's a lot of different information out there about what could possibly have and happen in the markets. I don't think there's going to be this big catastrophic collapse right away. You know, I think the equities might get hammered pretty soon, definitely within the time frame of, of Obama, before Obama leaves office. I mean, that's almost a given, because, like I said before, we're in the third longest bull run in equities history, except, and if it gets to July, that's going to be the second longest bull run. Um, and, you know, looking back, looking today, the Dow's pulled back, the tech sector's already had an implosion, and, you know, that could be leading to other things, too. But, um, and also, a lot of the predictions on shorting silver, you know, it looked bad, and all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it sprang to life, uh, you know, yesterday. Well, it, it, you know, since, uh, I guess, Friday, it boosted up. And everybody's predicting it's going to go down. You remember all the experts start predicting it's going to go down to 15 and stuff? I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, the way I look at it is, if you got physical silver, you shouldn't be thinking about the price so much. Uh, it's nice if everybody can bottom fish at the bottom, but... Everybody's not going to get rich. It's a protection against a collapse of the financial system per se. And, you know, maybe that's what J.P. Morgan's doing a little bit by lightening up their position in a derivatives market, right? In gold. And them actually having a physical safe, right? Possibly. And, you know, the thousand points of light so it ought to be the answer to the Illuminati that all the common people have. A thousand points of silver, silver coin. Uh, because... Um, yeah, I looked into that organization. Somebody alerted me to that, and I says, "Yeah, that's more than likely if you want to say uh, that's an Illuminati organization, George Herbert Walker Bush, and things like that." But you know, I have to say this. Um, you know, I'm not like totally hateful of the elite per se. You know, not really, not really. Um, I guess it all depends because within everybody, there's good and bad. And, you know, I actually have to point out something here with um, a lot of things. A lot of times, um, the elite know how to trick the majority by um, just putting something out there that they'll bite on. And you, you see this a lot with, you know, anything that's out there, 
with giddy rumors on videos too because I don't like putting those out. I've seen, you know, I've noticed that what to put out, I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm sticking with the facts. But, uh, you know, it's like, you know, it's the, the whole problem with everything is not like you could say it's the one basis point that's the problem. It, it's actually, it's, it's kind of like widespread. It's uh, people are, uh, there's a lot of people that are evil by nature within them. And it could be in all different stratas of society. So it's it's like a, you know it's a mixed bag. So a lot of times people like to say it's just this, it's just that. You know, you know it's it's George Herbert Walker Bush. He's the bad guy. It's Bill Clinton. He's the bad guy. Or it's the Clintons. And they're all friends with each other too. That's another joke, you know. Or it's Obama. He's the bad guy or something, you know. They they like to actually say it's just one thing because it's simple, but it's not. It's not that simple. And I, I tell you the truth, I think the elite can be influenced a lot. They can be. Uh, and actually, I talked about some things before about how the elite are insulated by the big bucks bullshit. <laughs> That's what we call them. The big bucks BS. You know, they always have around them the most high dollar professionals. They give them the best advice on everything, whether it's financial, medical, health, or whatever, you know. And, um, you know, they would not, these people that would not be around them at all unless they're getting a nice big fat check for something right so a lot of times sometimes the best things out there are the cheapest things and you elite miss out on that you know I you know I talked about it with health sometimes I mean maybe the elite are aware it is but uh, I don't know maybe somebody like quote unquote energy medicine with uh, the rife the um, the, uh, the Lakowski coil or whatever magnetic pulsers and stuff I don't know I don't even know if the elite even know about this stuff because None of the professionals that are around them are trained in it. Are trained in it. You know, I mean, a lot of it, there's a mixed bag with this type of alternative stuff, too. It's like, uh, you don't know what the hell, uh, you know, who's real and who's not. I mean, some of it does have merit, some of it doesn't. You know, a lot of it is garbage. But a lot of it, there's there's actually stuff out there that's solid that may sound like pseudoscience, but it's actually solid. But the elite aren't aware of that. The elite, the elite aren't aware of that, a lot of that stuff, because they're surrounded by the big bucks bullshit. And, uh, you know, it's catching up with a lot of them, too. And, you know, to tell you the truth, when they're playing this game with the global uh, power to try to construct a global financial system, a global government, and all that kind of garbage, they're playing with fire. They don't know what they have. They don't even know how it's... It they, they could be their undoing, too. Very much so. Very much so. And you know they don't give a shit because they're just they're just like uh, somebody owns them more or less. What the way they they're owned is that they got an insatiable, bottomless appetite for money and power. <laughs> and it's just some people like that. You know, I remember some uh, somebody that was close to Bill Clinton said he was like that. You know, he just likes the women. He likes the the money and the, no, not the money so much. Maybe the woman and. Uh, I don't know, having fun. <laughs> but, you know, he could very much be somebody else that's not in his power status, too. There's a lot of people like that that are not making a lot of, that aren't ex-presidents and everything else. So the problem isn't always, like, clear-cut. It's like all of us, man. It is all of us. So I want to actually make that reference to the uh, Thousand Points of Light. And uh, you might want to think of the Thousand Points of Light as a Thousand Silver Coins. And uh, maybe that's the thing that's going to save you. Uh, right now, you know, I've been putting a lot of videos out about this uh, spooky rife machine, man. I'm like, man, I'm amazed by this damn thing. Uh, it's unrelated to this video, but uh, it actually has in within it um, this guy, man. I don't, I, I'm flabbergasted by what he put in here. Um, he actually has in it where you can run the frequencies to uh, bring in the uh, frequencies into the body of like colloidal silver and colloidal gold and things like that. Now I make colloidal silver all the time. I got, I just made some more quartz of this stuff at about six parts per million. But you know, I never made colloidal gold because I was looking up. I said it's not that easy to make colloidal gold. It's like there's a lot more involved with it. But you know, using this program, you can make yourself uh, some colloidal gold and you know transport it to your DNA and I don't know, boost your brain function allegedly or something. So I just want to point out that, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to look at some of the, the spooky videos, I, spooky rife 
machined videos I have out here. It's a pretty good name for it because uh, it's almost like I can't wrap my mind around uh, how it works. You know, it's a that's a good term, spooky, because um, it's like bewildering if you think how the hell it works. You know, how the hell it works. But you know, that might be exactly a good term to put with the financial markets, too. You know, it's, it's, it's spooky that we're still... Uh, the dollar staying afloat. It's spooky that you know the price of silver is being is staying this low, and the price of gold. It's spooky that you know the whole financial system didn't implode already with all the debt that's on the United States, right? But one day, probably reality is going to catch up. And I think it is. I think it is, and it's probably in the plan. As a matter of fact, you know it's pff, 101 common sense that. You know, the debt is being pushed on not just the United States, but it's being pushed on Japan. Japan's got, you know, double debt to GDP. It's even more than that. It's being pushed on Europe. It's being pushed on everywhere. Be, you know, maybe not Russia and China, but it's like the whole idea is to um, break the financial system. So they're going to have to come in, you know, with a solution to the crisis. And the solution's already on its shelf someplace. You know, they just got to dust it off and bring it out and say, hey, we're going to have the global financial system. You know, maybe during that time and when that's going on, I would think the price of silver and gold is going to skyrocket and probably get way ahead of itself because of investor panic. Trouble is, I don't know exactly when that's going to occur. You know, I'm thinking, and I've been thinking this for a while. I think, you know, we got about three-year waves, it seems, with uh, silver and gold and the metals. Like 2005 was a height, 2008 was a height, and then, you know, it comes back down fast when it goes up fast, 2011, and I'm thinking 2014. Now, there's indications out there, there's, you know, there's a lot of different experts saying different things, you know, the metals could be going to, starting to go up this summer, or maybe in September, and they're also talking about, there's a lot of experts out there talking about the latter half of this year, they expect the market to really correct hard. And there's some people that say it might be two years from now, but I'm thinking that I well I keep I keep thinking about George Soros's bet. It's, he's not going to make a bet that's going to last two years. I think uh, it's going to fulfill itself within the year of you know from when he started it, basically August, mid August of 2013. So you know it's like uh, a patient waiting game with some of this garbage. You know I know sometimes it gets boring, but you know it's going to play out. It's going to play out. Now, as far as like what's going to happen here in the second half, um, you know, I I think the deal with Ukraine, um, with Putin, you know, one thing that stuck in my mind was that article about the Crimea having the water shut off basically from the irrigation to the crops. Uh, that's a matter of months where that's going to be a major problem. And I can't see where they're not going to have to push very hard to get that back turned on because um, it's going to lose billions of dollars for the Crimea and all the ancillary in industries and uh, everything else that depends upon the agricultural revenue that feeds other things is all going to be lost. So it's going to create a big time economic depression in the Crimea if that water is not put back on. And I think the only way that's going to happen is if Russia controls eastern Ukraine. So, I mean, you know, when you're talking about crops, it's one thing. I mean, you're talking about you only got a powder, matter of months. But when that happens with tensions and everything going up, it always the price of gold and silver goes up. Also, I want to put out something else about, um, you know, I, I read about Gazprom stock, which is like uh, the stock that's known for, you know, the, uh, the corruption and elitist. And, you know, it's a company that's run by a bunch of oligarchs, you know, Taking as much as they possibly can and running with running with the running with the money and stuff, but Gazprom stocks have been going down for a number of years. But they always pay interest, right? They always pay money. They always pay money. But you know, what I'm thinking is Gazprom is well, usually when something looks the worst, that's when it starts going up eventually. Gazprom from Russia the stocks, they might do all right. <coughs> and you know. <coughs> When I say that, I think that, um, you know, what's actually going to drive them up, too, is probably like the things I've been talking about all along with silver and gold is like oil is going to have to lead the charge. Right now, the West is trying to hold down the price of oil, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. 
because um, for one, uh, I think it's in the cards that when Putin does try more military force in Ukraine, you know, through uh, proc, through like the uh, self defense forces, whatever the hell he's using, I think he's going to act. I think the West, if there's a big freaking confrontation in Ukraine, and that really gets you know, bad, bad, really bad. I think the West, together with Israel, is going to strike Syria and use that time to do so. So, there's major confrontations coming up. It's probably all planned by the Illuminati. But, um, you know, I don't like actually focusing as much in on his silver topic as much because it's not the real thing that's going to save you. It's a lot of other stuff. It's a lot of other stuff. And you got to keep that in mind. Um, I personally think that now that I see J.P. Morgan lightening up his position on derivatives, I think, um, and actually getting fiscal gold, you know, the strategy where people are saying, uh, keep physical gold, keep physical silver, what, whatever, physical goods, real hard assets, and not, you know, invest in paper and derivatives and things like that. That's, you know, it's exactly what J.P. Morgan's doing. They're moving that way, too. And you should be, too. You should be, too. So if you want to stick with the thousand points of light, I guess the thousand points of light is going to be a thousand silver coins. That'll be your points of light. That'll lead you out of the uh, darkness and what may be coming up in the uh, with some financial turmoil in the future. Um, you know, as far as George Herbert Walker Bush, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't really mind that guy too much. I don't even mind a lot of them to tell you the truth, Clinton or anything like that. I'm going to say right now that sometimes the problem is more to people and you know the way I look at it I don't even vote for Republicans or Democrats because the Bush family and the Clinton people they're all friends you know they're all friends they're all playing on the same team so when I take a choice uh, you might be saying it's a wasted vote I actually go for the third party you know that might not be the perfect solution but you know it's better than doing nothing about it right doing absolutely nothing because uh, you know, they're all Illuminati when you're dealing with the Republicans and the Democrats. You know, people are missing a point. They're missing a point. And, you know, Ron Paul, I know people get mad at me for saying this. Sometimes, you know, it depends on who it is. But I think he's just, uh, you know, a staged uh, false opposition out there, you know. And I can tell you right now, a lot of stuff, too, even with, uh, you know, the silver movement. There's been so much BS thrown, thrown around with this garbage left and right, but I I think, though, 2014 might be the good year because of the three-year waves. We've been having this pattern of three-year waves, and, you know, 2015 has been slated for different reasons as being a major problem with a uh, financial crisis, and that could bring the prices down again after hitting new heights, and then it'll creep back up, and maybe 2017 will be another new height. So, you know, stick with your investment. It's a long-term thing. And make sure it's outside the paper financial system because the only way you're going to have points of light or a 1,000 points of light is to have physical coin that are nice and shiny.